Hi, my name is Thorin Tabor. I'm part of the Mezerov Lab at the University of California, San Diego. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Gene Pattern Notebook environment, which is a platform that we have developed for creating reproducible and distributable bioinformatics notebooks without the need to write code. In recent years, computational notebook systems have become popular. The foremost of these is Jupyter. These allow you to work with programmatic or command line tools from a notebook document. They record the code you run, they display the output of that code, and they allow you to annotate your methods with embedded images or blocks of text. This is a good first step. But these systems alone are not sufficient to meet the goals of interoperability and reproducibility. First, there is the obvious barrier to entry. To use most notebook systems, you need to know how to code. And sometimes, the required programming knowledge can be quite extensive. Second, most notebook documents only work with a single programming language. And so, for example, if your notebook is using Python 3, it can be difficult to call in tools implemented in R, Java, Scala, or another language. Third, while notebook documents encapsulate the code that you run directly, they don't encapsulate the complete computational environment. That is, all the packages that you are importing and their dependencies. Like I said, notebook systems are a good start, but overcoming these limitations is where the gene pattern notebook environment comes in. So let me talk about gene pattern. Gene pattern is a platform for reproducible bioinformatics research. It's a long established project. The first release was back in 2004, and it's been going strong ever since. Gene pattern is open source under a BSD style license. Its repositories have a collection of somewhere in the ballpark of 250 analytic modules, including some of the most popular methods in genetics, genomics, transcriptomics, and proteomics, as well as general machine learning methods. The Gene Pattern public server has some 75,000 registered users and usually runs somewhere in the ballpark of 4,000 analyses each week. You can also download the code and run your own private server, as many organizations do. Finally, I want to note that it's an open platform. There is a repository of community-contributed methods that cover a wide range of bioinformatics techniques, including CRISPR analysis, bisulfate sequencing, flow cytometry, and RNAi screens. Best of all, Gene Pattern allows you to execute your workflows in a reproducible, interoperable, and collaborative manner, no programming required. It does this by encapsulating analyses into individual computational components called modules and pretty much anything that you can run on command line or from an interactive programmatic shell can be turned into a gene pattern module. What's more, it allows you to retrieve the results of your analyses and to send them the downstream steps in your workflow or to view those results using one of its many interactive visualizations. Gene pattern also allows you to offload your computation. This means you aren't limited by your computer's memory or number of CPUs, and your analyses aren't interrupted if your laptop goes to sleep. Our public gene pattern server runs its analyses in the cloud. We've also recently added the ability for it to run jobs in the Expanse supercompute cluster at SDSC, and soon on other Exceed supercomputing resources. And that brings us to the gene pattern notebook environment. Gene pattern notebook is built on top of the popular Jupyter notebook platform. It takes everything that is great about Jupyter, such as embedding narrative, interactive, and computational elements, and combines it with the power of Gene Pattern's reproducible analysis engine. This allows you to access and embed all the features of Gene Pattern inside your notebook document. This is great because one of our underlying goals is to encapsulate a complete research narrative from its conception to its dissemination. This way you can leverage the best of what Jupyter and Gene Pattern have to offer, interleaving text, graphics, interactive visualizations, widgets, and other analytic aspects. And you can do all this without the need to write code. That includes running analyses, retrieving your results, creating visualizations, and sharing your research with others. Now, if you're a programmer, you may be asking yourself, what does it matter if notebooks can be used by non-programmers? Let me give you an example of why that does in fact matter. As I mentioned earlier, I work in a bio lab. And a basic truth of pretty much any biology lab is that there is going to be a wide disparity in the ability of individuals to code. So while there may be a bioinformatician or data scientist in the lab who eats clustering algorithms for breakfast, there may be three bench biologists who, while they're great at working with the math or underlying biological concepts, lack prowess, so to speak, at the command line. Making 
notebooks friendly to non-programmers is good for mixed environments like this because it allows people of all levels of technical sophistication to reproduce complex analyses. It helps keep the programming inclined members of the lab from becoming bottlenecks for this sort of work. And at its heart, this is one of the big appeals of computational notebooks, a user-friendly interface in front of an interactive shell. Now, before I get too far into the details, however, I first want to take a look at a real-world example of Gene Pattern Notebook in action. Here you see a screenshot of a fairly typical Jupyter Notebook. What it's doing is loading gene expression data from various tumor samples and then performing support vector machine SVM analysis to divide those samples into different classes. These classes should align the different tumor types. This is first performed in a set of training data where SVM attempts to find an optimal hyperplane for dividing the samples. It's then given a new set of samples of unknown tumor type. The hope is that it will then be able to predict the type of those samples based on the hyperplane chosen with the training data. If you didn't follow what I just said, that's fine. I'm not going to quiz you later. But I do want to note that SVM is pretty common, and this particular notebook uses the implementation in the scikit-learn package. Anyway, this example works, but it's also about 70 lines of code. And if we're going to reuse this notebook, that code needs to be maintained. Furthermore, if I'm saving this notebook and sharing it with my less programming-inclined colleagues, it would be a challenge to explain to them how to modify it to use their own data or to use different SVM options. Here's another notebook. It's also doing SVM analysis, only it's using one of the tools available in the Gene Pattern Notebook environment. Analytically, these two notebooks are identical. That is, they're both performing SVM analysis on the same training data, using the same test data, and will reproducibly yield the same results. In this notebook, however, the SVM analysis is being rendered as an interactive widget. Documentation is available through a graphical menu. And if I shared this with my less technically inclined colleagues, it's a lot easier to explain. Just click the Upload button, select the data you want to use, and then click Run. Even as a programmer, I like to sometimes use these widgets. If nothing else, they help to reduce stupid, all but time-consuming mistakes that I might make in the code. All this makes for faster and more accessible research. I like to say it's the clicker picker upper. Gene pattern modules, such as the SVM analysis module you saw on the previous slide, are easily browsable and searchable right from the notebook interface. This can be accomplished using the Gene Pattern Toolbox, which is a panel on the left-hand side of the screen. You can use it to see which tools are available and add one to your notebook with a click of a button. Just find the module you want to add in the list and click on it. Voila, an analysis has been added to your workflow. Gene Pattern Notebook includes a variety of other improvements to the Jupyter interface as well. Among these is our rich text editor, which allows for what you see is what you get, WYSIWYG style editing, and markdown cells. It's presented with a familiar word processing style interface. I'm also excited to say that this particular extension has been picked up by SUSE Linux and been made available through their YAST package manager. Another tool Gene Pattern Notebook provides is the UI Builder. It quite literally allows you to take any arbitrary Python function and then renders an interface to that function as an interactive web form. Then a user can just fill out the form and click the Run button to execute the function. This is useful if you find yourself having to use code that someone else has written, or if you are a programmer and you want to make your code accessible to non-programming users. And I want to note that the UI Builder is fairly smart about how it renders the web form. It will infer expected parameters from default values, it will display description based off the function's doc string, and it will use parameter annotations to provide descriptive text. Additionally, you can override any of these defaults by providing a bit of metadata, and the user filling out the form can use either string literals or reference variables by name. The UI Builder even has the ability to upload and load files from disk by dragging and dropping the file to an input field. Now you may be wondering what the code to produce the widget you just saw looks like. Well, it looks something like what you see on the screen right here. In this case, we have a small Python function that wraps scikit-learn's k-means clustering object and fits it to a set of data. To this function, we've added a single line of code, which is the decorator you see highlighted in bold. To display this function in a Jupyter cell, you simply need to leave the function as is. The widget will then automatically be rendered. Or alternatively, you could use IPython kernel's built-in display method. We've also recently added support for creating UI Builder cells in R through the use of a Jupyter cell magic rather than a Python annotation. This works much like other UI Builder cells with parameter metadata specified in the first magic line. Along a similar vein, 
we have a number of other features that are available for those of you who are programmers and want to make your code accessible to others. GenePattern has a RESTful web API, as well as a programmatic Python client. We also have a number of programmatic tools that can be used to load data into a pandas data frame from various common bioinformatics formats. These will recognize the type of data being loaded and also automatically import it, including row and column headers. Once the file has been imported into a data frame, it can be viewed, filtered, and used in conjunction with numerous other Python libraries. We've also recently released our notebook project functionality, which is the ability to encapsulate individual notebooks and their dependencies in a portable environment, so that when you launch a notebook, it comes with all its own libraries, supporting files, and other necessary elements. This helps improve reproducibility and provides an easy way to support different environments and tools. It also expands GenePattern Notebook's publishing and sharing capabilities. If you want to see an example of how any of this works, or if you want a notebook that reproduces a specific method, you can visit our free and public notebook library. This library includes notebooks for many common and popular bioinformatics methods, including methods for working with RNA-seq and single-cell data. It also contains a variety of useful tutorials, workshop materials, and templates for different bioinformatics workflows. In addition to the notebooks that are already in the library, you can also easily publish or share your own notebooks with other GenePattern Notebook users. Publish is our functionality that makes a notebook project available to the public. It's useful, for example, when creating a notebook meant to accompany a paper. Share, on the other hand, makes the project available to select collaborators. This way, anyone you invite can collaboratively view, edit, and execute your method. GenePattern Notebook is getting better and better all the time, and we have a variety of new features in the pipeline. Throughout this presentation, you may have noticed that the screenshots alternated between the classic Jupyter Notebook UI and Jupyter Lab. We support both interfaces, and although Jupyter Lab 3 support is in beta, it will see a stable release in the near future. Finally, we've been working with the Galaxy and Cytoscape teams to integrate these two bioinformatics tools into the GenePattern Notebook ecosystem. Once completed, you will be able to run Galaxy Jobs or view Cytoscape networks in much the same way that you can currently run GenePattern. We also have integration with IGV, the Integrative Genomics Viewer. So where do you go to use this functionality? The easiest way is to simply log into our free and public GenePattern Notebook workspace, where you can use all of these features or publish your own notebook projects, no installation required. It comes with all of the GenePattern Notebook tools, as well as many open source bioinformatics and machine learning libraries. The workspace is available to the public at notebook.genepattern.org. Alternatively, Installing GenePattern Notebook on your personal laptop or organization server is fairly straightforward. The required packages are available through the PIP and Conda package managers. If you install the GenePattern-Notebook package, you'll get the entire suite. We also have a Docker image with the whole stack already set up and configured, and that's available in Docker Hub. This container has been built for use either as a signal user instance or in a multi-user environment in conjunction with Jupyter Hub or Binder. Finally, I want to reiterate that this is all open source. We have several GitHub repositories that are publicly available, divided by component, and anyone is welcome to check them out. We love pull requests. Documentation is available right in GitHub and linked from each repository's readme. So before I finish, let me just give a few acknowledgements to people who have contributed to GenePattern and the GenePattern Notebook environment. You can see the team on the left, Jill Mezerov is our PI, on the right, you can see we've gotten funding from ITCR, which is part of the National Cancer Institute. I would also like to put up a few resources from the net, which you can visit if you want more information. These include the GenePattern Notebook workspace, our website, our GitHub organization, Docker Hub, etc. Finally, I want to thank everyone for listening to the talk. So with all that being said, thank you for listening.